Good afternoon. Welcome to this webinar on PCI PIN security and certification. My name is Kishore Veswani, and I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Control Kids. I really appreciate the time you've taken today to attend this webinar on the PIN standard and PCI PIN certification. A few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, we will be distributing a copy of these slides as well as this recording to everybody who has attended this session. So certainly earlier next week, you will get recordings of this webinar. We expect this webinar to run anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes with ample time for questions after that. So please feel free to put any questions in the questions window as we go through the webinar. Also, if you're having any audio or visual difficulties, please put them in the chat window and our moderators will be moderating it for any issues that come up uh, from an audio or visual perspective. You can certainly go to our website at www.controlcase.com and see a recording of this webinar, of any past webinars, and any future webinars that may be coming up for, um, as well. That being said, thank you once again for attending this webinar, and we shall get started now. Our agenda for today would be to talk a little bit about Control Case, do a high level of introduction to PCI PIN. We'll talk about the PCI PIN certification process. We'll talk about some of the common challenges, and then certainly we'll have enough time for answering any questions that may come up. Let's start with a high level for those of you who are not familiar with Control Case on an introduction of what Control Case does. Uh, we focus on certifications and continuous compliance services. We are a global company headquartered outside the Washington DC area, and we really focus on IT security certifications and related continuous compliance services. We act as your partners through compliance and certification services, and we certainly invest a lot in technology to ensure your experience with Control Case is always good. We are a certified auditor for PCI PIN, but here are some of the other regulations as well for which we are able to provide certification services, and in fact, many of our customers engage us to do uh, you know, multiple certifications all in a single um, assessment. So that was just a brief overview of Control Case. For those of you who are not familiar with Control Case, we will now dive into the meat of the presentation, which is to talk about PCI PIN. Um, as we dive into PCI PIN, first let me talk about PCI standards in general, because a lot of this can get confusing because there are so many parts in the payment chain that uh, are moving pieces that have to work together for credit card and debit card data to be secure. So PCI standards are, 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 are a set of standards that have been put together for different stakeholders to work together to ensure a secure payment chain. I think almost everybody is familiar with PCI DSS, which, was, uh, which is the flagship standard uh, that goes aqu across acquirers, merchants, and service providers. Our focus today is going to be on PCI pin security. And I put, I put some of the HSM and POI in here because they are somewhat related um, as we go through the uh, you know, pin security uh, specifics from our presentation today. I just wanted to club these because as you think of pin security, you should also be thinking of you know, approved devices that are able to uh, function in the ecosystem. And again, from, from this slide, all I want uh, everybody to be able to kind of get a grasp of is that you know, as we talk about the PCI security standards, really the PIN standard is 
closely related to the PTS, POI, and HSM standards um, from a conceptual perspective. So what is PCI pin security? I think all of us are familiar with using pin numbers. We use pin numbers in some countries when we use our credit cards. We almost always use pin numbers when we use ATMs for, for withdrawing cash. Sometimes it's a combination thereof. Pin security plainly is, is a standard that has been put aside to ensure secure management, processing and transmission of that pin number again again you know I, I want to get back to the basics of pin security as in why is it in place it is to protect secure management processing and transmission of pin data and pin data is nothing but what each one of, of us here is familiar with which is many a times when we are processing debit card transactions credit card transactions, withdrawing money from an ATM, uh, we are using PIN data. And PIN security is to ensure that PIN data that we all use is secure. Um, everyone must comply, uh, you know, the different stakeholders need to comply with diff different aspects of PCI. Uh, the latest version uh, of PIN security is version three. Let's take a step back and talk about the big picture of what's involved in pin security. So I mentioned, uh, you know, when, whenever you hear the word uh, user, usage of pin for point of sale, usage of pin for ATM, you know, use of HSMs in general for pin management, all these should trigger the thought process that, okay, maybe pins are involved and pin security is involved. And the questions we want to ask ourselves when we are thinking about pin security, and I wanted to make sure I, we put it in a manner that is checklist-like, is these really five questions when we are talking about the big picture of pin security. Number one, how does it apply to me? Why does it apply to me and how does it apply to me? I could be an acquirer, I could be a service provider, merchants obviously have their uh, you know, part to play, uh, but number one, how does it apply to me? How am I involved in dealing with these PIN numbers? Number two, is the, point of, is the POI, ATM, HSM devices that are part of my infrastructure or network, are they compliant to some of the earlier standards I mentioned? Again, I won't get into the separate standards which make devices compliant, but devices and the physical hardware that's being used in the ecosystem plays a big part of securing pins in the ecosystem, obviously because you're entering pin numbers uh, from a security perspective. Next, we get a level deeper, and we talk about are the cryptographic keys secure? Anything to do with pin security has to do with uh, public key infrastructure, encryption keys, and so forth, and at the, at, at the most basic, are the cryptographic keys secure? Then, are the keys transmitted securely? A lot of times, you know, setting these up requires transfers of keys. You will hear a lot of uh, terminology around symmetric keys, asymmetric keys. The, really, it comes down to, are the keys being transmitted in a secure manner? And finally, as you all know, cryptography has a lot of standards. And are the key sizes, algorithms we are using in the overall chain meet the standards that are required for security as we deal with pin data? So again, we wanted to lay out one slide which puts out the big picture. And the big picture really is, uh, you know, as you can see over here, we have broken it down into, first of all, where does it apply? Well, we're trying to secure the pin, the pin data. Where does it apply? It applies to any place where you are entering pin data. That could be point of sale, that could be ATMs. If you're back in HSMs, it could, uh, you're not entering pin data, but it comes in the management of pin data. 
So that's when it applies. What do we think of when we talk of thin security? Well, how does it apply to me? Are my devices compliant? Are the cryptographic keys that I have secure? Are the keys transmitted securely? And then are the key sizes and algorithms that are in use appropriate? And again, this gives you a lot to think about, but hopefully simplifies it to a level where you can start thinking about what, what you know, how does pin security and what does it generally mean? So let's let's dive a little bit into the PCI pin version three standard. Um, anyone who has to go through this has to has seven control objectives that and and multiple related requirements that form a part of the PCI pin version 3.0. These objectives are related to transaction processing operations and they span across, you know, again, equipment, are keys secure, are they appropriately transmitted, and so forth. We won't be getting into the objectives now. It's certainly available at PCISecuritystandards.org. So um, there is extensive detail on that uh, on the PCI website. But the base PIN standard, call it level one, or basic level, has seven control objectives that um, an entity must satisfy for being PCI PIN certified. Now, there is what we call Annexure 1, which has two requirements. This only needs to be done when remote key distribution is being used. So if, if people... So if you take a step back, the ATMs and the point of sales have to eventually get keys in them for secure transmission of that PIN. If the keys are transmitted to these devices remotely through a service provider or remotely internally or remotely through an acquirer, that's when an extra one will apply. Um, getting a level deeper, if the actual entity or the service provider also manages the master set of keys or the certification author certificate authority, then an extra two is required. And then an extra B relates to specific requirements related to the key injection facilities. Um, a lot of times, obviously, there are various service providers that provide key injection facilities. Um, and so an extra B would also apply to them in addition, obviously, to the you know various control objectives. And then, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, making sure we're using the right algorithms is an important part of this. So again, I didn't want to get into too much detail on the actual control objectives, and there's a lot of detail on that and a lot of good information on the PCI security standards.org website. Uh, the PCI Council has provided extensive information, a lot of FAQs, and a lot of good data on their website on how to secure this and how this ties back to the radius standards. So I encourage everyone to go log on and really look, uh, you know, look at that. Uh, I touched on that briefly, but again, where does, uh, you know, these are types, these are types of situations where uh, PCI PIN may apply. It could be an acquiring institution, entities responsible for PIN transaction processing. Uh, the, the payment brand uh, have the discretion to also ensure that they are uh, mandating certain institutions or entities to comply with PIN standards. A lot of service providers that act on behalf of the acquiring entities, uh, such as key injection facilities, certificate authority, and so forth. Uh, where it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply for issuing processes, but obviously not required by brand, probably not required, uh, you know, when we think of PCI PIN as a whole, but absolutely a great standard, even if you are issuing, to think about how to protect, you know, transactions which are within your purview, uh, even though if you're an issuing entity. So, you know, a lot of great work has been done by the PCI Council on this. And even if you're an issuing institution, I would encourage that you look at this as a, as a guideline uh, for a really uh, highly secure standard. 
So, um, you know, we talked a little bit at a, at, at a high level to give you the basic of what is PCI PIN certification and how and when does it apply. Uh, let's move into the actual PCI PIN certification process. Uh, as I mentioned, Control Case is a PCI PIN auditor, and we work with customers and, you know, probably uh, wanted to lay down a chart of the steps that would typically be required in a certification process. So going from top to bottom, you know, clearly uh, the PIN standard has a lot of different pieces to it, a lot of moving parts and so forth. Um, and so number one, we always ensure that we have a strategy meeting to ensure that we are looking at the right components, not really missing out any important components. And so uh, the strategy meeting is extremely important. That is also a part of training our customers on what the PCI PIN standard is, both executive level training as well as practitioner training. Next, we move into scoping. When we talk about scoping, this talks about uh, we, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, depending on the services being provided or the, or the type of institution, whether it's key injection, certificate authority, acquiring, uh, we make sure we right size the scope uh, and work with you so that there are no surprises later. Once we have finalized the scope, we then move into gap assessment, which is review. You know, we uh, we always always follow a partnership approach, so we will work with you iteratively to do a gap assessment and ensure we are guiding you towards any remediation activities. So obviously we don't do the remediation, that is the customer's responsibility, but we will guide you as to what are the right strategies if there are certain gaps that help you get, uh, uh, you know, that'll help you get compliance certified and most importantly, secure the PIN, well, which is the objective of this overall exercise. From there, we will then move into the final assessment, which is once the gaps have been done, once the scoping has been done, once the environment is ready, we will then move into the final assessment. Um, and once we do the final assessment, we will start documenting the report on compliance. We will make sure we are uh, dotting our I's and crossing our T's for any certification um, evidence that we need for any documentation that we need. We then have an independent quality assurance process, which is our internal checks and balances as required by the PCI Council, but also obviously as required by any audit firm to ensure that your assessor is also being tested for high quality. And that's a part of our internal quality assurance process. Once it goes through the internal quality assurance process, and assuming there are no questions, uh, once everything has been formally documented, we then do uh, release the certification to our customer. So again, right from strategy, we work with customers. We understand that this is new for many customers, and then some customers have done this for a long time. Either way, we start all the way from strategy and then make sure we are doing a high-quality job. Um, and then this is, you know, no matter whether we work with you or not, this is probably a good process to follow as you're looking at uh, certification from a PCI PSS, P, oh, sorry, PCI PIN uh, perspective. Uh, we will be sending, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will be sending this. So uh, certainly, you know, you will have uh, free access to this data. Uh, the question is when, uh, you know, when do we have to do renewals and recertifications? It depends on the payment brand. Really, the payment brands are responsible for tracking and posting uh, the validation process, and uh, and and then you know, in in, in many cases, also using assessors uh, and rotating assessors. So, really driven. I think the, the 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 bottom line here is it is really driven by the participating brand. Um, okay, so we we talked about what is PCI PIN, PCI PIN version 3.0. Where does it cover? And what are the certification steps? So we have gone through that. Now, let's get into common challenges. First of all, any audit, any certification, the challenges are that 
compliance typically would place a significant burden on the organizations. You know, people deal with multiple re regulations. Uh, sometimes it's not core um, and so forth. Specific to pin security, really these four areas are the areas we find where we see common challenges in, uh, and we work with customers. These are common challenges we see uh, when it comes to compliance for pin security. Uh, across, ar around system compliance, I mentioned earlier that the actual devices need to be uh, have different types of certifications, and if it's the wrong device that's not certified, which is obviously outside your purview, that's a problem. Uh, key management, policies, procedures, and training, and not having a well-established key injection facility are some of the other common challenges we see when it comes to uh, pin security. You know, certainly from, for, from us, we help customers do it the right way, make sure we do audit with the highest quality, and ensure we pay, uh, secure your payment chain. Um, and at the end of the day, if you go with control case, we follow a partnership approach, we make things streamlined, and we ensure we are really working towards your security and not just an auditor with a checklist. That being said, um, as I had mentioned, please, please, that was the last slide, please put in any questions you have in the questions window. I will now answer them. Uh, we will be sending a recording of this webinar. We will be posting these slides. You can certainly go to our website, www.controlcase.com, for any old webinar or upcoming webinars um, that, you know, that you may have. Uh, that being said, let me start getting into the, I see some questions here, so let me start getting into that. The first question is, uh, th does this, does this, uh, does the processing uh, card transaction require, uh, do we require a PIN audit for any card processing transaction? And it really comes down to, uh, so the answer to that is, yes, if you're using PIN, then you are more than likely to ensure that uh, you're likely to ensure that uh, pin audit in some way uh, does apply to you. So uh, it's a you know if there's a pin being used, it's likely that uh, pin audit is being uh, is applying. Uh, the next one is uh, is around responsibility. Uh, the next one is around the responsibility of who is responsible as part of a terminal provider. Who has the responsibility to request that the terminal providers have PCI PIN? Um, and as I've mentioned, the payment brands, you know, if you had to look at the chain, it goes from the payment brands to the acquirers to the service providers who are providing that service. So that would be, you know, if I, if, from a generic perspective, without knowing the exact situation, certainly all the way from the payment brands is where it starts, then it goes to the acquirer, and then it's service provider. They'd, you know, and in that chain, they would determine who has the responsibility. Uh, the next question is, can we use a card-based HSM, which is connected on server for UPI? Uh, you know, certainly reach out to me at kvestwani at controlcase.com, and uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, and answering another question, uh, you know, I'm in this room, with our, uh, you know, PIN certified auditor. So uh, certainly if you get back to us with your um, questions, we will ensure that we are able to answer the specific. But certainly if, you know, if you have an HSM involved and you're using PINs, then, uh, you know, you do come in, uh, you do come in scope. Um, the next question is, what is the, you know, if someone is certified to version two, uh, what is the, you know, uh, I guess what is the, uh, how long does it take to get recertified? You know, and it, and it depends on a bunch of things. Um, you know, I would say six months is a good time frame. 
uh, three to six months is the average time frame. Uh, it really depends on what changes have happened since your last time um, and, and, and so forth. So, uh, so you know, at, at the highest level, it, it's three to six months, I would say, is end-to-end -end from project kickoff to certification uh, is a good time frame. The specifics, it could be more or less depending on how many changes have happened since then. Uh, the next one is, do we have a change matrix between, or you know, what are the changes between version two and version three? Uh, and then yes, and the answer is yes. You would, ha you know, there's the there's, the PCI Council has published, uh, I think, FAQs um, as well as some other information on their website. I don't know whether they quite spell out the exact, uh, you know. Uh, the exact uh, differences, just a one-to-one, -one. but um, you know there are there are fairly significant changes, um, and so a lot of the FAQs have um, have that. You know, you would have to go to the PCI Security Standards uh, website to ensure that uh, you have that information um, in there. Uh, there's a question. There's a couple of questions on the versions, uh, and the version is uh, 3.0. Uh, and and uh, you know you can uh, that that's the, the latest version is in play, which is version 3.0. Uh, let me see. We do have a lot of questions. Uh, you know, we have a couple of more minutes. I will answer a few more questions, and then we will ensure that we capture the remaining FAQs and send it out as part of our uh, you know response as well. Uh, the, the next question is around, can the card numbers be validated in PCI pin security requirements? So when we talk about card numbers, uh, really the pin, when we talk about pin security, the, when we talk about the pin, specific pin security certification, we are really focused on the pin numbers and lesser on the actual card numbers. The card numbers are certainly covered as part of the PCI DSS certification. And so PCI DSS covers the card numbers, uh, pin security covers the pin numbers. Uh, there's another question which talks about how is this separate from a P2P certification or is this a prerequisite? Um, and so when we look at P2PE and PIN, those are uh, there's no real prerequisite. These are two uh, separate certifications with two separate objectives. Point-to-point -point encryption ensures uh, uh, protection of all cardholder data, including PIN numbers, from the point of sale or point of acquiring to the back end. So P2PE is about point-to-point -point encryption to secure not only pins, but actual card numbers. The pin security piece really focuses on the security of the pin data part of a transaction. And there is, you know, if you look at that, certainly both deal in encryption. So there is overlap. Uh, there is certainly overlap when it comes to requirements and depending on how organizations are structured between P2PE and pin. So there's certainly overlap. There are areas of differences but the objectives are a little different um, because uh, one is looking at uh, including card data security, the other one is mainly looking at, uh, you know, specifically at uh, 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 just at the PIN numbers. Uh, all right, uh, this, these, this was all the time we had. There are some other great questions. We will publish an FAQ and submit it as part of our outbound that we send for a recording uh, for our, um, you know, for our uh, uh, presentation. You know, certainly we have P PIN, PCI, PIN assessors on our staff who will also be able to answer questions. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to Control Case. We will ensure that we, at the end of the day, 
ensure that the PIN auditor is able to answer your questions if it comes down to a specific technical question. Um, again, hopefully you found this presentation useful. Um, as you go through your PIN needs, if any of the questions come up, please reach out to us at www.controlcase.com and we will certainly make sure the right PIN auditors are in touch with you if it's a technical question or the right representatives are in touch with you if it's a non-technical question. Thank you so much for your time. We look forward to you at attending another webinar um, and have a good rest of the day.